and welcome to a very special episode of 1BB Dispatches. My name's Jack. My name's Dan, and the purpose of today's video is to talk about the ongoing developments of the trenches at Lincolnshire Sock Clubs The Farm. Uh, we have some questions from fans and followers, and we're going to go through them with you now. So our first question comes from one of our followers, on Nom, who's a good follower and usually asks us lots of questions. Uh, he wants to know how the cooking's going to work. Um, as you've probably already seen from a few of our posts and uh, from a few videos that we've put out, uh, the kitchen is now pretty much complete, bar a few little upgrades we're going to do over the next few sessions of building. Um, um, yeah, we're also going to uh, try and instill as much realism as you can into an airsoft game. So what will generally happen, what we think is going to happen, is that we're going to have the each team, each side, split into two sides of watches. So while one watch goes and queues down Rat Alley, waits in the kitchen, gets their rations, the other watch will maintain the front line, keep up uh, observations, etc. etc. Mm. We really like the idea of uh, someone being able to go around and dish out like snacks, mm. like uh, broth or soup or something like that, whilst the men are waiting. Banging the, the soup tin. Uh, yeah, soup. yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you won't have to bash the eagles out the, uh, the bread or over. <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. <laughs> Uh, next question we had was uh, what would we most like to build in the trenches? What is it that we'd like to see? Uh, what is it we're going to be doing? Um, well, I would really like to see a machine gun nest, obviously, uh, for the Hot Shift 1914 that I built. Uh, if you've not seen it, it's on my Instagram page. Uh, obviously, with World War One Airsoft, the majority of people are going to be using bolt action rifles, so the heavy machine gun can make a big difference between victory and uh, so we are running a really good, uh, well-positioned bunker that has inherent flaws built into it as well, don't we? Yeah. So it's not a complete bunker that's impossible to assault and get better. There are ways and means around things. I mean, the Shadow has done such a good job on it already. Uh, if you've seen any of the uh, Facebook or Instagram posts, but it's, it's now near complete now. Yeah, and looking real good. Yeah, and of course I want saps as well. You know. Saps, of course, naturally. Um, for me, the big thing is uh, I'm looking forward to setting up the medical tent. Something yeah. that we've had in the background, I think has been teased a little bit yeah, on the Instagram account, is um, you know we have like a, a medical core uh, where revives won't be that straightforward. There'll be added immersion mm -hmm. there. We've looked into special effects makeup and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we like the idea that wounded men would have to be taken to a dressing station um, and appropriately revived before they can come in the, the, the difference with this is that you can actually steamroll the position then because the if you're delayed at revive, then it's going to delay the reinforcements to that front line to that position and it's more likely that the enemy, enemy can see more of them. Mm -hmm. It makes, makes more exciting gameplay. Immersion, immersion, immersion. Okay, uh, the next question is on Instagram and it's by uh, user Goon Walker. How long and how many sets of trenches on both sides will there be? Now, we can't really give too much away at this point, uh, but... Yeah, we like to tease on this one. Yeah. The only thing that we would say um, is that we're about 20% done. And when I say done, I mean not 20% dressed, not 20% decorated, 20% dug. dug. So we think of sort of Eep 1917. <laughs> So the next question is, are more trench features planned, mortar pit, etc.? Well, the, uh, the mortar pit's actually been complete. You'll see that panning in front of your face right now. Um, that's, uh, that's been a really good build and the walls are really well supported. I think that's one of my favorite bits so far. There's loads of sandbags, which is really cool. Um, I think the next thing we're going to look at is shell scrapes in No Man's Land as well. So when that initial assault has been repelled, perhaps, uh, you want to give that sort of cover on your way back or you know, something, a position to fight from. Yeah, there's loads of stuff we want to do in No Man's Land. There's some really special features that, again, we don't want to talk too much about. We much prefer to tease things for you. It's more exciting for you to build the hype up for it. Uh, but it goes without saying, stay tuned. And there's some really cool things coming soon. So our next question is another Instagram question from Alfie underscore Ogden 04. He wants to know, will we ever see vehicles uh, such as armored cars, etc., used? Um, well, so... As many of you will know, the trenches here are in Lincolnshire, which is just right outside Lincoln, actually. And uh, Lincoln has, is an integral part of British Army history because there's a hotel in the middle of Lincoln called the White Hart. And yeah, there was a room there that was called the Arbor Room. I think it's now called the Tank Room. Um, that is where the first designs were drawn up for the very first tank in, in 1915. So we wanted to 
create something that's sort of a tip of the cap towards that event and that close proximity to the trenches. But yeah, it's another one where we don't yeah. want to say too much. We much prefer to tease it for you. Um, again, stay tuned. What I will say is, is we've looked at loads of different things. We've looked at uh, Renault FTs, we've looked at Mark IVs, we've even looked at remote control blimps <laughs> yeah. and remote control Rookshop biplanes. biplanes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's things coming and uh, it's all exciting as well. Yeah, and our final question is, we're being asked, what further refinement do we have planned for the trenches? Well, uh, for me, uh, and I'm sure for many of you, the, the most memorable part of the First World War is the barbed wire. And so I've just built myself a blacksmith's forge um, for many other reasons. But one of the ones, I, one of the things I wanted to do with it was to make barbed wire pickets. So we have some sort of health and safety friendly barbed wire in mind and uh, pickets. And that's gonna be a really big feature for me, I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like iconic, isn't it? You think of World War and you think of barbed wire. We're looking into it. And yeah. uh, I think it's gonna be a really cool aspect of the trenches. We're looking into loads of stuff. We're looking into um, telephone wires. We're looking into different ways we can light the trenches because we plan on having night games. Gas bell, for sure. Gas bell made yeah. out of an old uh, artillery shell. shell. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we're looking into how we can have storage around the trenches. Um, we've got loads of signs already painted. I think we've posted yeah, some. Yeah, we, we definitely have. Um, there's, I think a big thing, because a lot of people don't realise that we will be staying in these trenches for 24 to even 48 hours. So we are going to be building beds, we're going to be building places for people to sleep because this is going to be a, a real immersion here. Yeah, we're going to go all the way with it and provide the most immersive experience. And then people will end that weekend exhausted in a good way, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, they'll have had an experience that is unmatched as far as we know. Yeah, and frankly, we hope to see you there soon as well. <laughs>